area legislators have chosen to come to campus for a listening session uh, about the budget. Um, we have Amy, State Representative Amy Loudenbach, and I'm not going to know all of your districts, so I apologize. Uh, Mark, Brock County. Mark Spritzer, who I do know, his district is 45, I, because I just met him recently. Uh, Senator Janice Ringhand. Representative Deb Colsty and Representative Andy Jorgensen. So I know you've all got a lot to say, um, so I will we'll let them take the floor, and I think that Deb is going to talk a little bit about format. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. This is a huge crowd. Um, so tonight, I first of all, we have slips, and if you want to speak, fill out a slip and get it to Steve or Maggie, and they will make sure that we have it so that you can come, come up to this podium over here and speak to us. Um, because of the sheer number, this is truly going to, we're going to give about a five minute or less introduction of each of us. Um, then we're going to have a true listening session. Um, there's just the sheer volume that we won't have a lot of give and take between whoever the speaker is and ourselves. But we will certainly, then after that we will give about five minutes so we can maybe address any concerns that we have that we heard during the testimony. After that, I know that most of us will be able to stick around for a while and talk to you um, at greater length. So um, we're also going to have a three minute time limit at the podium because we have a lot of speakers tonight. So think about what you wanna say. If somebody in your group has already brought up all the points that you want to, if you're here as a group, um, you may not wanna speak again, but you certainly are welcome to. So anyway, um, thank you all for being here, and we'll get started, and we'll start with uh, Representative Andy Jorgensen. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thanks for uh, UW Rock County for holding this. Thank you for uh, the offices of uh, Representative Colstein and Senator Ringhand for organizing this. A lot of work goes into this, and uh, thank you uh, for being a part of uh, tonight's uh, listening session. I don't want to say, spend too much time with me uh, yakking. Uh, I want to get to a hearing from you. But I was just uh, at uh, a bunch of listening sessions in my district this morning. And uh, somebody hit me with a um, question I was unable to answer. And if you know me, I, I, I usually have something to say on everything. But they asked me, they asked me, name one good thing about Governor Walker's budget. I told him I got nothing. Um, and it's unfortunate, but here's one thing I, I, I heard time and time again. Maybe we'll see you here tonight. But uh, a lot of people came to me and said, if you get a chance and you get to talk to Governor Walker, will you give him this message? Keep my five bucks. <laughs> give it to public education. They're hurting right now. Give it to our, our universities. That uh, cut, proposed cut is absurd. Give it to our rural roads, roads that are going to be chewed into gravel if we don't start fixing them and, and, and taking care of what we have. So again, I want to thank you for being here tonight. It's one of the most important things we do as legislators is to uh, listen to you. And I can't wait to get started with that. Thank you. Again, um, I'm Representative Deb Colsty, and I want to thank everyone for being here. And I think just the sheer number tells that everybody has a little angst about this budget that's going forward. Um, I particularly have a great deal of concern about public education and, um, you know, I, I even have a bigger concern that right now we're looking at revenues that were, you know, even though they were projected, they're not going to meet those projections. And it was, it's, those projections already took into account, you know, the tax cuts that we got, et cetera. So I have a, I have a big concern. Um, just because our revenues are so low and that this budget is uh, it's, it's going to affect a lot of people as, as evidenced by the number of people in this room. So I thank everyone for being here and um, again I appreciate the fact that everybody has concerns um, and we'll get started here momentarily. Is this working? It is. Okay. Thank you. Um, once again thank you all for being here. This is just really an amazing crowd. I'm really overwhelmed by it, but as the previous representative said, it shows a level of concern that's out there for our state budget. And my background is finance. I'm Senator Janice Ringhand, uh, newly elected into the 15th Senate District, taking Tim Cullen's place. 
but my background is finance, and this budget is deeply disturbing with the level of bonding that's being proposed just in the transportation area alone. We right now are paying about 20 cents on every dollar in debt repayment, and if this spending borrowing goes through, it will be closer to 30 cents on every dollar in debt repayment by 2020. So we definitely need some fresh ideas, and I'm very happy you're all here. Thank you for being here. Good evening, I'm State Representative Mark Spreitzer. I represent the 45th Assembly District, which covers the communities of Beloit, Evansville, Broadhead, Albany, Judah, and Orfordville, uh, the seat formerly represented by Janice Ringhan before she went to the State Senate. Uh, and uh, very glad to be with you and to see so many people out here, including so many faces that I recognize. Uh, and uh, looking forward to hearing what you think on the budget. Uh, I have a lot of concerns. Some of them uh, have already been mentioned. I won't go into to detail uh, on them because I really want to hear from you. Uh, and we'll, we'll follow up with some comments after we hear from all of you. But uh, it's a very tight state budget. Uh, obviously, difficult decisions needed to be made. But I'm very concerned that the proposal from Governor Walker uh, cuts a lot of things that I value and that I think are important to our communities. Uh, and I hope that we can find some alternative solutions as the budget works its way through the legislature. Good evening, my name is Amy Loudenbeck and I represent the 31st Assembly District, which is Eastern Rock and Western Walworth counties. This is my third term in the State Assembly and I also serve on the Joint Finance Committee, which um, is a committee made up of Assembly representatives and senators. It's 16 members and uh, we actually have the opportunity to vote into every one of these green tabs will be budget papers th that we will um, vote on individually. Actually a lot of these tabs will be multiple. So this is um, a budget that I think I've said uh, since the, bu the governor proposed the budget that I'm looking forward to looking at the dollars and the details in the budget because it's very important. This is um, this is going to determine, you know, all of our state agencies, all of our local government aids, all of our, um, you know, all of the health benefits that we provide, and it's really important. And uh, and it's, it's something that takes about three to five months of um, of going through the process like this and listening to the public. At least for us on finance, in particular, will be um, in Brilliant, Rice Lake. Milwaukee and uh, Reedsburg. We had hearings all week last week in Madison. So it's a long process. So I'm really, really glad. Um, thank you, uh, Representative Colstein in particular, for um, putting this together because I think it's a great opportunity. I want to hear from um, from the people that I represent and I, as much as I'm obligated to listen to the others. I would always encourage, you know, when you hear things or you have questions or you read something in the paper, I um, I put together just, it's just a little card with um, with links on it to where you can find the budget. This is just a summary. The, the real budget's real long, but um, you know, we did actually agree to not have uh, to not have handouts besides little informational things, not to try to you know spin things one way or the other. So I just encourage you to always look for the look for the information, um, and then certainly uh, give your state rep a call or write to the budget. There is a budget listening session email um, address that'll be circulated as well. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to start the the listening session now. And so when I call your name, you can go to the podium and speak. You have three minutes. Um, Maggie will give you a clue that you're 30 seconds shy of being cut off. So, um, and also, I, I, I have a favor to ask tonight. I know there are lots of things that people would like to speak on because it's it's been a little raucous up in Madison lately. But I'd like you to please keep your comments to the budget if you could tonight. So I just would appreciate that. Nobody's going to do anything to you if you don't, but I just, it, as courtesy, please just keep it to the budget tonight. So first there will be Lanny Knickerbocker, and then Sam Nichols after that, and then Dave Vaughn. So Lanny, you want to speak first, and then Sam Nichols. Nihon. Okay. Okay. Then Dave on after Lanny. Okay, well, I didn't expect to go first, but uh, here we go. Been thinking about this, so uh, Amy, first of all, I <laughs> commend you for being here. You're in the lion's den, I believe, but uh, <laughs> so m many of my thoughts are, are expressed to you. Um, uh, the three things that I'm primarily concerned with personally, um, I have um, 
a mother who's uh, 87 and uh, her sole income is on um, Social Security. She uh, qualifies for senior care. So I'm very concerned. Um, she's vulnerable, so I'm concerned about that. Also, I have a son who's on disability and uh, also concerned about the long-term care that's going on. Um, <clears throat> on a personal basis, though, I feel that as though so much of the emphasis has been towards uh, uh, big money. <clears throat> and our sign says in Wisconsin, open for business. But I'd like to think that we're also open to support the citizens and the members of, of this great state. Um, um, I have an article here from the Milwaukee Journal on, it's an editorial on Saturday, and it has to do, uh, the headline reads here, uh, Governor Scott Walker's plan for the Bucks is a sucker's bet. And one of the things that jumped out here is that it says here the combined net worth of the Bucks owners, Larry Edens and Mark Lasry, the combined Okay, net worth of them is $3.1 million, or billion, $3.1 billion. And we are going to support with our valuable and scarce tax dollars, billionaires. This is the trend I see happening, and I just it just bothers me to no end uh, that, that that's our focus. My, I'm here to just say, please, think and, and, and lead with your heart, okay? not by money and look for what's best for the citizens and the people uh, that uh, are the good citizens the other thing is the stewardship cuts um, we're very blessed to live in a state that is just absolutely beautiful with wonderful natural resources and uh, to think that we're cutting the DN uh, dnr program and our stewardship program is another thing that's very unsettling for me so um, those are the issues that i'm i'm wanting you to look at and think in terms of respect for our people and our citizens here, not just the corporations and the businesses. Thank you, Thank you Lanny. <laughs> Next is Dave Vaughn. Hi, thank you for having this tonight. Uh, I'm a citizen of Janesville, and I've got, Amy, I've got a, some questions for you. Um, on the education cuts, um, Janesville has, I believe, over 500 homeless students. Beloit has over 400. Um, do you ever, as legislators, think of that? Also, the tie-in there is the education Dave, cuts. Dave, I hate to do this to you, but can we? Can we? You just we're going to have this strictly be a less listening session because I think that. Um, Amy would take the brunt of all, okay. the, all the questions, okay. and I just I don't wish think that's you fair. all would pay attention then to uh, the the homeless students. We're becoming a third world world country, uh, and with the report that Deb you gave on the thirty percent, I mean that's pretty sad. We need a balanced budget, and on the right to work, um, I wish somebody up there would make me understand why a union has to represent those people that choose not to belong. Uh, and I think it's high time everybody gets off the party line and does vote like Lanny, and I know Lanny from Little League. Um, get off the party line and vote with your heart and your head. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. So I have two slips here, Tom Boswell and Fran Zell. Do either one of you want to speak? Um, good evening. I'm Fran Zell. I'm, I'm from Evansville. Um, I feel strongly about all the cuts in the budget, but I'm going to speak about senior care because um, I think I have a lot of um, knowledge about um, Medicare Part D and how it's affected me and people I know. Um, this senior care is an incredibly wonderful, innovative program. If, even if you don't have a really low income, you have a, um, you have a deductible, and once you meet that deductible, you get five and $10 copays. With Medicare Part D, 
um, you don't necessarily get a five or ten dollar copay, despite what you hear in the ads and the. Um, I don't know, I see all these signs about zero copays, but that, that doesn't happen. Um, most of the, a lot of the very common medications are $40 copays and up. So a person is not just paying, um, now you're gonna have to pay the premiums, which could be $60 a month or more to, to even um, be eligible for these copays, and now you're paying for a month's supply of something as simple as doxycycline, you're paying $40 when a little bottle for a month used to be $20, for doxycycline, now the copay is 40, and they're telling you that that little bottle costs 190. So we're dealing with we're dealing with drug companies. That's really basically, in my mind, a criminal element. And I do not, I do not appreciate paying these these gouged prices. So senior care is doing something that is incredibly wonderful for people. Um, uh, enabling them, if I, when I was working in my prescription drug coverage, I could get five and dollar, ten, five and ten dollar copays for anything. And now seniors who are on limited income have to pay forty dollars and up for a copay. I mean, these are elderly people. Do we just want them to die? I, I really believe people are going to die if they, if they can't get um, fair prescription coverage. Also under Doyle, I believe, we were um, encouraged and allowed to buy drugs from Canadian, reliable Canadian pharmacies. And just, you know, just to prove how, <clears throat> how inflated the drug prices are, you can get that same um, doxycycline for probably a third of the price, maybe um, a three-month supply um, for about $60 versus $400 for the same amount from your local pharmacy. I mean, I don't know for sure that's $400 is accurate, but I know that the one-month supply was 190 so you can multiply that by three. So you're paying this, these really unfair co-pays. Um, I, I just don't understand why um, seniors should be treated like this when we have such a wonderful program that um, makes medication affordable and, and many people are going to just not take their drugs the way they're where the way they're prescribed to take just to save the money and this is just this is just untenable uh, my name is Tom Boswell and I also live in Evansville um, unlike Fran, I'm not a senior citizen. I just turned 22 yesterday. <laughs> um, but I want to speak in favor of seniors. Um, I, I also, like many people here, have many other concerns about the budget, including, you know, the stewardship program. But, um, uh, you know, I, I am a senior, and, uh, and I am on senior care now. And uh, as you probably know, uh, we have lots of seniors here, and seniors are the people, unfortunately, sometimes the only people who are concerned about what's going on in, in government, and, and they are the ones who vote. I hope you all are, are aware of that. And uh, I'm just concerned. Uh, Wisconsin, as you all know, has a, a, a strong and proud and, and long tradition of supporting all kinds of, of social programs going back, you know, 100 years now, and a lot of those, particularly some of the recent ones, are, are health programs like Badger Care and Senior Care. And what I've been told is we're the only state in the union that has a program like Senior Care, and I hate to see it uh, destroyed. Um, some information I had is that it will supposedly, these cuts that are planned by uh, Walker, would reduce uh, state spending by 15.6 million over the biennium uh, budget, but that four fifths of the cost supposedly is actually financed with with federal funds and drug rebates. So it's not a, a huge savings, and it just seems to me a little kind of ironic and almost hypocritical that uh, on certain things like uh, high-speed rail or. Uh, you know, other important uh, programs, the governor is some, some like uh, Affordable Care Act. Uh, our governor doesn't want to take federal money, 
but on, uh, on other things, you know, certainly for the DOT and building more roads, it's, it's, it's acceptable to take federal money. So I, I just think to, to turn down this federal money and, and to do away with a program that's so important for our seniors' health is, is a real, could be a real travesty. So I, I certainly hope it's the Joint Finance Committee and all of you can help uh, put that back in the, in the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, two more questions. I have Jim and de Bogart. Did you want to speak? Yes. And Wayne, Scott, did you want to speak or did, was, okay, you two are up next. First Jim and then Wayne, then Bob McAllister, then Ron Schuler. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, the Board of Directors of Legal Action of Wisconsin, an organization that provides civil uh, attorneys for individuals who meet low income standards. We're here to ask for something that may be of comic relief, but we're here to ask for $10 million from the state to go to the four civil legal service providers in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is one of only three states in the union that does not provide any funding for civil legal aid. Our other Midwestern states provide an average of $7.6 million a year for a civil legal aid. Wisconsin has about 1.2 million people, about 21% of the state, who have income low enough to qualify for free legal aid, and yet 80% of those people don't have lawyers when they go to court. Uh, this funding would provide about 960,000 Wisconsinites uh, with the opportunity to be represented in civil court. Recently, the funding sources for civil legal aid have re been reduced. The lawyer trust accounts are down by over uh, $1.6 million in the last several years. The state in 2009 did provide $2.5 million for legal aid services, but nothing since that time. And federal funding is down 20% since 19, since 2010, excuse me. There have been studies that have shown that for every dollar invested in a civil legal aid program, clients recover at least $10. And the state saves $2.69 on services such as emergency medical, emergency shelter rather, health care, foster care, and law enforcement. The state government is the only entity that doesn't help contribute to civil legal aid uh, dollars. Private attorneys do, judges do, the federal government does. This could be a necessary, and it is a necessary component to, fund, to help fund us. It's not a partisan issue. Uh, these individuals exist in everyone's district. Thank you, 30 seconds, all right. Um, and to the degree that attorneys are involved, it helps the court system uh, process the cases more quickly, rather than the judge have to, having to or the court commissioner having to explain the rules and explain the procedure. The attorney helps facilitate that. So it's not a joke. We're asking for some more dough. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> uh, my name is Wayne Scottam. I'm speaking for, uh, on behalf of Job, which is part of Wisdom, and I'm speaking on treatment alternatives and diversion. Um, we're, we're requesting another $20 million to be added to the treatment alternative and diversion program, and that program is set up to, to keep uh, nonviolent criminals out of, nonviolent offenders <clears throat> out of the prison system. And for every dollar that's invested in the uh, TAD program, uh, saves taxpayers another dollar uh, and ninety-six cents. Uh, TAD is effective at improving public safety because those that graduate from a treatment program have a much lower recidivism rate. In other words, they don't go back go back to jail, 
you not only have the economic savings from investing in a program like TAD, but you also keep families that uh, are, well, you keep, you keep more families intact so that you don't have as many single parent families, or in some cases, uh, where you both, where you have a husband and a wife or partner that are, are both, uh, uh, have either a drug, alcohol, or uh, mental health issue, you, if they both end up in prison, then you're bringing in, you're bringing in health and social services and that whole, whole list of services that, that cost people, cost taxpayers more money. So, uh, I guess I don't need an, well, one of the, uh, with the $20 million increase, that would, that would, for each year of the budget year, that would keep an additional thousand people out of prison and would, would save the taxpayers $30 million per year for both years of the proposed budget. Thank you. Uh, well, I will put in a plug for senior care too because that is worries, <laughs> worrisome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob McAllister from Evansville. Thank you uh, very, very much for listening to us tonight. I feel like I'm part of a gigantic, wonderful Norman Rockwell painting here, kind of. Um, I've got a, a few uh, concerns related to conservation and energy and the environment. Um, some related to the UW system. One, I think, really kind of hit me was the deletion of the Wisconsin Bioenergy Initiative um, it's part of the new Wisconsin Energy Institute, which is only a few years old now. They've, they've already had over 100 patents. Um, it's a, an invigorating organization, and I hope that that $8 million can be reinstated into that uh, account. Um, other issues related to the same uh, tenor that here, um, the deletion of the solid waste uh, research funding, um, the deletion of extent, extension recycling education, um, the, uh, the fact that the renewable energy goal would no longer apply to the UW system. Um, those are some things related to uh, UW-oriented uh, aspects. I think there's a lot that goes on in the, in the, in the landscape that we don't notice um, in our daily travels. And one of the things I've noticed in the last couple of years is the, the amount of um, hedgerows being ripped out and the amount of center pivot irrigation going in. As agriculture kind of gets more concentrated, uh, the knowledge of agriculture gets more concentrated into the private sector, I think that we need public sector people to help out in an objective way for soil and water conservation. So I noticed that $800,000 was being cut um, from the appropriations for um, the land conservation districts, and I hope that that can be reinstated. Um, I think that's one of those hidden things, having done that myself, that really makes a huge difference out, out in the real world. And then lastly, um, I hope that um, the funding for um, all the good things that happen out of UW-Stevens Point in environmental education can be reinstated as well. They've done a lot of good for uh, dozens and dozens of school districts around the state, and uh, I hope they can. I hope they can stay alive. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Ron Schuler from Janesville, and the first thing on my agenda would be to uh, challenge each and every one of you to carefully go over the uh, budget and eliminate all the pork that's been thrown in, and such as Mill the uh, Bucks facility. As I recall, Miller Park got uh, approved a number of years ago on some sort of technicality in the middle of the night, and George P. Tack switched his vote against his uh, constituents' wishes, and he, in fact, got recalled which is probably the reason we're throwing this thing into the budget, So, because I understand certain people don't like the word recall anymore. Uh, 
main focus I want to look on is uh, Article 10, Section 3 of our state constitution that reads, the legislature shall provide by law the establishment of district schools which shall be as nearly uniform as practicable and such schools shall be free and without charge for tuition to all children between the ages of four and 20 years and no sectarian instruction shall be allowed therein but the legislature by law may for the purpose of religious instruction outside of district schools authorize the release of students during regular school hours. I don't understand how this voucher system is. The voucher schools from the private ones do not have to follow state mandated guidelines. They don't have to take special ed kids. They don't furnish what the, is nearly uniform that the public schools do. So I think we're uh, kind of uh, trampling on our state constitution. So I'd be in favor of eliminating private school vouchers entirely and certainly not expanding those. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to have you remember, I went to Adams School here in town and I remember on the walls of Adams School, the phrases of the people, by the people, for the people, and we understand that united we stand, divide and conquer, we fall. Thank you. Janet Labrie from Janesville, Larry Meyer from Whitewater, and Terry Meyer from Janesville. <clears throat> 